welcome to this class today i am going to start a new chapter chemical reaction of class 9 and the subject is science and technology it is taken in unit number 15 this is first part and in this first part today i am going to present physical and chemical change and then we'll enter into chemical reaction first what is physical change and what is chemical change and lastly we enter into chemical reaction okay look at this video clip what is this crumpling of paper a man is very angry he is crumpling a paper piece of paper and look at this another video clip ice is melting and here another video video clip she is very angry <laughs> she is breaking the glass bottles and other bottle also and glasses also and look at this another video clip G gold is melted and it is molded into the bar and this is another video clip this is very simple you know about this we boil water like this and this is another one what is this threading paper a man is threading paper very fastly and another this is sugar is dissolved in water sugar is dissolved in water and this is a woman is sharpening a knife and this is the sublimation of what sublimation of iodine iodine is heated and it converts to vapor and when it comes in contact with the cold surface provided by round bottom flux in which pieces of ice is taken then it cools down and converts again into what the same iodine and crystal of iodine can be obtained this way looking at all these have you noticed what i want to show you all these are physical change all these are physical change not the chemical change in all these event actually the property physical property of the substance is changed no any new substance is formed that's why i want to talk about this in the context of what physical change now in physical change only physical properties changes any new substance never forms okay what are the physical properties of matter they are density color solubility volume conductivity temperature hardness order malleability shape luster viscosity texture pressure etc all these are called physical property of matter and in physical change this property are found to be changed somewhere density changes somewhere color changes somewhere hardness changes because of the physical change these are the physical property which changes during physical change now i want to tell you some more example of physical change what are they crossing an empty carton this is a physical change boiling pasta to make it soft thus just the hardness is changed dissolving sugar in your tea this is physical change freeze drying fruits and thawing raw meat chopping a vegetable into pieces melting candy dissolving a drink mix into water adding milk to cereal adding food dye to white icing this because of this reason we can make the ice colorful coloring easter eggs mixing fruits in a fruit salad and letting gelatin set in the freeze etc etc this way these are the physical change which we have seen in our daily life there are many other but the physical change can be defined like this the change in which no any new substance forms but only the physical property of the matter changes is called physical change this is all about the physical change we don't have to go to detail about the physical change just for information how physical change is different than chemical change we are talking about the physical change otherwise we don't have to go in detail now next i want to show some video clip related to another change look at this what is seen a piece of paper is burning when it burns suddenly smoke produces 
certainly as produces this is burning of paper now this is another change if a screw nail is placed for few days openly at certain place then a reddish brown colored powder appears on a surface which is called rust and this process is called rusting and this is another video clip where we are boiling egg boiling of egg this is another ch change look at this this is baking baking of cake and this is another change a man is eating something and it goes through osophagus and reaches to stomach and then duodenum and goes to ileum and lastly to large intestine and comes out the undigested material as feces this is one kind of change and this is called digestion of food substance and here electroplating is done how a coin is in a coin is dipped into copper sulfate solution and positive terminal of the cell is connected to a piece of copper negative terminal is connected to that coin and after few minutes what we get the white appearance of the coin is no, no more white it is somewhat reddish brown colored colored coating and this is the color of copper and this process is called electroplating electroplating of copper on the surface of certain metal now what is this this is a process in which the chemical reaction is taking place inside the cell and because of this chemical reaction electrons are being produced and electrons are pushed from negative terminal to the positive terminal of the cell through the bulb and this change is actually the chemical change which occurs inside the cell zinc reacts with ammonium chloride inside the cell and zinc is used up and it converts to zinc chloride during this process this is certain change which we are going to talk later this is the use of cell in our daily life and this is another change i want to show i want to just mention only because you have seen this many times this is the milk which is converted to yogurt all these changes are actually chemical change and in all the changes the new substance forms not the previous substance previous substance lost its character and new substances are formed in these changes and this change is different than physical change this is called chemical change this is the change in which the new substances forms and in this chemical change certain changes occurs what sort of changes occurs in this chemical change color of the substance also changes in physical change but in chemical change color of the substance may change and formation of gas may occur formation of precipitate it means in a solution certain powdery substance appears which is called precipitate because of certain changes in the solution the powdery substance if appears that is called precipitate and formation of precipitate may take place in certain chemical change in certain chemical change the order of the substance appears i mean to say order can be smelled and change in temperature in certain chemical changes the temperature of the substance increases just for example when a cell is used to light a bulb then because of the chemical change inside the cell the cell becomes a little warm the it it will be heated up and we can feel it when we touch the cell something is burning if somewhere something is burning certainly that is chemical change when magnesium burns in air then it reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide when carbon burns in air it reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide when sulfur burns in air it forms sulfur dioxide burning itself is a chemical change if in certain place something is burning then it undergoes what chemical change this is another also light is being produced in certain chemical change light will be produced just for example when a cell is connected to the bulb then bulb gives, a, gives us light when a paper is burned then burning paper gives us light these 
are the changes which may occur in chemical change or all of them doesn't occur in the same change but some of these some of these changes may occur in certain chemical change okay after all this now how to define chemical change we can define chemical change this way the change in which completely new substance or substances forms with different properties is called chemical change okay after all this i want to take one example of physical change and one example of chemical change to make you more clear about the physical and chemical change let's say salt is dissolved in water they, then what happens they form salt solution we can say that salt plus water gives salt solution and another example when hydrogen combines with oxygen they form water what it mean it means when hydrogen bonds in oxygen or in atmosphere then it reacts with oxygen to form water this can be represented shortly like this now looking at these two changes have you noticed this salt when dissolves in water then salt solution form do you think that salt retains its property in salt solution yes or no salt retains its property in salt solution if you test that salt solution then you can feel it salty what it mean salt is combined with water but without the loss of its property still the solution is salty do you think that water retains its property in salt solution yes if we heat the solution then water can be evaporated and it can be again condensed to get water separately water didn't lose its uh, property water contains its property i mean to say water retains its property in salt solution salt also retains its property in salt solution it means no any new substance is formed in this change that's why this is physical change salt retains its property in solution and water also retains its property in solution that's why this is not the chemical change no any new substance is formed this is physical change and now another one hydrogen when bonds in oxygen then what happens water forms hydrogen and water both are completely different matter hydrogen is combustible gas but water is not combustible oxygen supports combustion but water never supports combustion but it it is used to extinguish the fire it means the property of hydrogen is not present in water property of oxygen is not present in water oxygen supports respiration water doesn't support respiration it means hydrogen and oxygen are combined in such a way that they lost their property in water so completely new substance formed at this time and this is chemical change first is physical change second one is chemical change the reason is very simple and clear new substance formed in second case but in first case new substance doesn't form and normally we write chemical change in the form of equation but physical change is never written in the form of equation that's why i am not writing salt plus water equal to salt solution we don't write this normally physical change is not represented by equation only chemical change is represented by equation and what happens due to which hydrogen combines with oxygen to form water certainly hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water it means we have to now go through reaction what is reaction now it's time to talk about the reaction hydrogen when reacts with oxygen they form water and this is a chemical change and what is exactly the reaction now i want to tell you about the chemical reaction what is the reaction hydrogen when combines with oxygen water forms mercuric oxide when heated at high temperature mercury and oxygen forms these two are chemical reaction but what happens in chemical reaction exactly i want to tell you a little detail hydrogen is available in the form of diatomic state in the nature like this h2 hydrogen is always available in the form of diatomic state this is h2 when it becomes free two atom of hydrogen share their electron 
and they form hydrogen molecule. And when it takes part in the chemical reaction, then what happens? This two hydrogen atoms separate from each other and they form nascent hydrogen. In the same way, oxygen also taking part in the chemical reaction. That's why oxygen is also available in air at any place in the form of molecule. Two oxygen atoms share their electron and form diatomic state and it, it is always available in the form of O2. And at the time of chemical reaction, what happens? These oxygen atoms separate from each other and this is called nascent oxygen. Now I am talking about the dissociation of hydrogen and oxygen molecule. First, dissociation takes place and then what happens? Two hydrogen atom combines with one oxygen atom to form water molecule like this. It means this reaction takes place because of the dissociation and reunion of the atoms contained in this element. In the same way, look at this another example also. Mercuric oxide has got a mercury atom and it is combined with oxygen atom. When mercury oxide is heated at high temperature, then what happens? Mercury and oxygen atoms separate from each other. And separated mercury remains free, but separated oxygen combines with another oxygen atom to form oxygen molecule. This way, when mercury oxide is heated at high temperature, then mercury and oxygen, these two separate from each other. In this case also what is happening, first dissociation took place and then again recombination took place. It means we can define chemical reaction this way, the interaction that is the dissociation and reunion of the atoms or molecules of the elements or compounds which brings chemical change is called the chemical reaction. Actually chemical reaction means what? Dissociation and again reunion and after the reunion some new substance always forms and this is called chemical reaction and this chemical reaction is represented in the form of equation which is called chemical equation. How can we define chemical equation? Chemical equation an equation which shortly represents a chemical change is called chemical equation. Just for example hydrogen plus oxygen gives water this chemical change is represented by the help of this equation. That's why this is chemical equation. And another mercuric oxide gives mercury plus oxygen. This is another chemical equation. There are many chemical equations we are going to write later. But what is chemical equation? The uh, chemical change. When a chemical change is represented shortly by an equation, that is called chemical equation. In any chemical equation, there are two parts. One is called reactant, another is called product. Now let's start reactant, what it means. Elements or the compounds which takes part in the chemical reaction is called reactant. In this reaction, hydrogen and oxygen are called reactant because they are going to take part in the chemical reaction. And in the same way, here mercuric oxide, only one reactant is involved mercuric oxide is taking part in the reaction. It means in first case hydrogen and oxygen are reactants but in second case mercuric oxide is reactant. Now what about product? What is product? The elements or compounds which form after the chemical reaction are called product. This in this reaction water is a product. In this reaction mercury and oxygen these two are the product. It means what forms of the after the chemical reaction is called product. These are reactants and these are product. Mercury, water and oxygen are product. Now we are continuously talking about the chemical equation. Now let's talk about types of chemical equation. Chemical equation can be written by three different ways. One, word equation. Second, formula equation. Third, balanced chemical equation. Maybe somewhere written just word equation and balanced chemical equation, but I want to introduce this also to make you very clear. Formula equation is a kind of chemical equation. 
Now, one after another, what are they? Let's see. What is word equation? Now, we can say this way. A chemical equation in which compounds and elements are represented by the words is called word equation. Look at this. For example, when hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water, the word equation will be like this. This is word equation because elements are written in word and compound is also written in word. In the word equation, element and compound are written in words. That's why this is called word equation. But what about formula equation when the elements or compounds are represented by their symbol or molecular formula in a chemical equation, then the equation is called formula equation. For example, when hydrogen and oxygen combines to form water, its formula equation will be S2 plus O2 gives S2O. Element is written in the form of symbol and if it is available in the form of molecule then element can also be written in the form of molecule hydrogen molecule is represented by s2 oxygen molecule is represented by o2 and water is a compound and its molecule is represented by s2o and this representation is called formula equation but the same formula equation can be represented as balanced chemical equation what is it when the number of atoms of each of the element of reactant is equal to number of atoms of same element in the product in a chemical equation, then the equation is called balanced chemical equation. Looking at this sentence, probably so hard to understand. Let's take example. Just for example, when hydrogen and oxygen combines to form water, its balanced chemical equation can can be written as S2 plus O2 gives S2, till now not balanced. Now, how to make it balance? Here we are talking about balanced chemical equation, but this equation is not balanced. This is just the formula equation, not balanced. Now, I want to suggest you to see this equation from the end. At the end here, we have one atom of oxygen. But in the reactant side, we have two atoms of oxygen. It is not balanced. Both the side, in both the side, number of atoms of each element should be equal. So, if we take here two, then number of atom of oxygen in right hand side will be two. And left hand side will also be two. Now, oxygen is balanced. Now, look at the hydrogen. Hydrogen is now two, two, ja, four. And here we have only 2. If we take here 2, then 2 to the 4, we have now 4 hydrogen atoms in left hand side. Now, number of uh, the hydrogen atom in left hand side is 4, and number of hydrogen atom in right hand side is also 4, and number of oxygen atom in left hand side and right hand side is 2. And that's why we can say that this is a balanced chemical equation. After all this, now it's time to talk about the chemical reaction. Now we are entering into chemical reaction. Actually, what is chemical reaction? I told you. What is chemical equation? That also I told you. But how to write a chemical reaction? This is a tough job. For this, we have to start with the valency. And valency was taught in the previous chapter, this atomic structure and chemical bond. Now, I want to recall that valency. Until and unless we are clear about the valency of element radical, we will not be able to write the chemical reaction. That's why I want to recall this valency. Look at this. The combining capacity of an element or radical is called valency of that element or radical. We can understand this way. If hydrogen is combined with chlorine, then one atom of hydrogen combines with one atom of chlorine. And if the same hydrogen is combined with oxygen, then two atoms of hydrogen combines with one atom of oxygen. If the same hydrogen is combined with nitrogen, then three atoms of hydrogen combines with one atom of nitrogen. In the same way, if carbon, one atom of carbon is combined with hydrogen, then four atoms of hydrogen combines with one atom of carbon. The combination of hydrogen and chlorine 
produces hydrogen chloride. Combination of hydrogen and oxygen forms water. Combination of hydrogen and nitrogen forms ammonia. And combination of carbon and hydrogen forms methane. Look at this. Looking at all these, it's very simple that one atom of chlorine requires only one atom of hydrogen to form hydrogen chloride, but one atom of oxygen requires two atoms of hydrogen, nitrogen requires three. It means what is the combining capacity of hydrogen? What is the combining capacity of oxygen? It is a little confused. We may confuse in this case, but how valency is declared? The number of hydrogen atom which combines with single atom of an element is taken as valency of that element. It means valency of oxygen is 2 because one atom of oxygen combines with two atoms of hydrogen. That's why valency of oxygen is 2. In the same way, valency of carbon is 4. Why? Because one atom of carbon combines with four atom of hydrogen. That's why valency of carbon is 4. This way, valency of each and every element is declared. In the same way, valency of radical is also declared by comparing the combining capacity of that radical with the hydrogen. That's why we can say this way, the number of hydrogen atoms which combines with single atom of an element is declared as valency of that element. For example, one atom of nitrogen combines with three atoms of hydrogen to form ammonia. So, valency of nitrogen is three. But if an element does not combine with hydrogen, then its valency is declared by combining it with chlorine. In certain cases, some element doesn't react with hydrogen. Then how to find the valency of that element? We can combine that element with chlorine to declare its valency because valency of chlorine is already declared as one. Okay, after this understanding, now we have to remember all this. Until and unless we remember all this valency, we will not be able to write chemical reaction. Look at valency 1, valency 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Why should we bother with all the name? Just the symbol is enough. We can understand, the, looking at the symbol, we can understand which element is it is. Valency 1, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. This is gold, copper, and this mercury. In the same way, sulfur, beryllium, magnesium, lead, calcium, copper, iron, cobalt, mercury, and zinc. And here, nitrogen, aluminum, iron, gold, carbon, silicon, sulfur, lead, S and means tin, stannum, and valency 5, nitrogen, phosphorus, valency 6, sulfur. Have you seen that some of the elements are represented in red color? The reason is very simple. They have variable valency. I'll talk about this variable valency in another class. But it's time to talk about second matter. First was what? Valency and symbol of different elements. Second, valency and formula of different radical. We have to remember the radical also. Do you remember what is radical? The group of two or more than two elements which behaves as a single unit in the chemical reaction is called radical. I am not talking in detail about the symbol and radical at this time because it was taught in previous class in unit number 14, atomic structure and chemical bond. We are, we are in the position to just recall this matter. Valency and formula of different radical is necessary to write correct so chemical reaction. That's why uh, we have to recall all these. Radical sulfate formula SO4 valency 2, sulfite SO3 valency 2, nitrate NO3 valency 1, nitrite val NO2 valency 1, carbonate CO3 valency 2, and ammonium NS4 valency 1. In the same way, there are other also bicarbonate, which is also called hydrogen carbonate, HCO3, valency 1, and hydroxide, it is OS, valency 1, bisulfate or hydrogen sulfate, HSO4, its valency is 1, and phosphate, PO4, valency 3, and chlorate, ClO3, valency 1, and silicate, SiO3, valency 2. All these radical we have to remember. 
Otherwise, we'll, we'll not be able to write molecular formula. So, we have to recall all these. Now, after this, now we are able to write the molecular formula of certain compound. If you have given certain compound, just for example, if someone says magnesium chloride, then magnesium can be written Mg, a symbol is Mg, chloride means Cl, magnesium is valency is 2, chlorine is valency is 1. We have to write the correct molecular formula by the transfer of their valency to each other. Magnesium valency 2 should be transferred to chlorine and we have to write this way MgCl2. But valency of chlorine is 1. We have to transfer this valency of chlorine to magnesium. We have to transfer this way. But Mg itself is 1. Why should we write 1? So it's normal practice that we don't have to write 1. Mg itself is 1. That's why magnesium chloride, its molecular formula is MgCl2. In the same way, if you are told to write molecular formula of ammonium sulfate, then you have to remember from this table what ammonium, its formula is NH4. And sulfate, its formula is SO4. Ammonium valency 1 should be transferred to sulfate. And Valency of sulfate 2 should be transferred to ammonia. Now, sulfate 2, I'm going to transfer it to ammonium. Ammonium 1, why should we transfer 1? Because sulfate, sulfate itself is 1. If we have to transfer valency to a radical, then we have to put that radical into the bracket. Because whole radical is 2, not only one of the part of the radical. If we have if we are transferring valency to a radical, then the radical should be placed in bracket. This way we can write correct molecular formula. Okay, now I want to tell you about the compound also. Some of the compound are written differently. I mean to say, if you are told zinc hydroxide, then you will write ZN for zinc hydroxide OS, and then you will transfer the valency of zinc to hydroxide and hydroxide to zinc. This way you will be able to write molecular formula of zinc, zinc hydroxide. But what about this? Look at this. Water, this name doesn't say that it contains hydrogen and oxygen. And this ammonia, this doesn't say that it has nitrogen and hydrogen. In the same way, look at this silica. How to understand that it contains silicon and oxygen? The carbonic acid, how to understand that hydrogen and carbonate is combined with each other? How to understand this? How to know this? Caustic soda contains sodium and hydroxide. These are common name. And looking at this name, we cannot write molecular formula of this compound. That's why we have to remember their molecular formula separately. If someone says, what is the molecular formula of methane? You have to remember. CH4. What is the molecular formula of caustic potash KOS? This way we have to remember this. Otherwise, we will not be able to write chemical reaction. There are other also. These are the common matter. I mean to say common uh, compound. Common name of the compound which frequently comes in our book in different sector. That's why remember this molecular for formula. Now I told you three different tasks. Number one, you have to remember the symbol and valency of element. Number two, you have to remember the formula and uh, formula and valency of radical. And number three, you have to remember the molecular formula of different compound whose name is not written according to chemical name. Their name is represented by common name. These, these are those compounds. After the understanding of this, I mean to say, after this, we'll be able to write the chemical reaction. Otherwise, we will not be able to write the chemical reaction. Okay, now I want to give you one project. This project contains three different parts. Take a chart paper and make a table of elements, including their name, symbol, and valency. 
what we did just before this. Similarly, take a chart paper, make a table of what? Elements in which the name of the element should be written and symbol and valency. Number two, take another chart paper or you can make uh, in the same chart paper, uh, element and ra radical can be included in the same chart paper also. Take a chart paper and make a table of radical including their name, formula and valency. Radical is represented by formula, element is represented by symbol. Now, take another chart paper and make a table of compounds including their common name and their molecular formula. Common name and their molecular formula. And after making all the chart, show it to your teacher and then attach it on the wall of your room. And whenever you get time, look at the chart paper and try to remember the valency of the element, valency of the radical, symbol and formula of the element and radical and the molecular formula of the common elements. Okay, lastly, what we did today, today we finished physical change and chemical change. Actually, what is physical change and what is chemical change, I told you in detail. And then, I told you about this chemical change, chemical reaction and chemical equation and then uh, the requirement for the chemical reaction. How to write chemical reaction? Yeah, yeah, what sort of uh, preparation is needed to write chemical reaction? I told you about this. In next class, we are going to write chemical reaction. Okay, today I want to stop. Thank you.